Hi everyone! So I'm making this video to walk you through how to actively read just to kind of give you an example. We're going to be using Leanne Howe's poem Evidence of Red, which you just read because you did the PowerPoint or Prezi, whatever. Um, we are going to read one of her collections called Savage, Savage Conversations. We're also going to read some of her short prose. So um, I figured this would be a really great way to walk you through and model for you active reading. All right, so I'm going to switch so that you can see my computer. Give me just a second. Whoop, there's my screencast. Uh, so here is the poem that you guys just read from the Poetry Foundation. This is from her collection in 2005. I've actually opened this up um, in a pages to kind of make it easier for us to, for you to see how I actively read. So the first thing I always do, especially with poetry, is I read it aloud to myself. So here we go. Evidence of Red. First night opened out. Bodies took root from rotting salt and seawater into evidence of red life. Relentless waves pumped tidal air into a single heartbeat. In the pulp of shadow and space, water sucked our people from sleep. That's how it all began. At least, that's all we can remember to tell. It began with water and heartbeat. In minutes, we tunneled through Corn Woman's navel into tinges of moist red men and women. Yawning, we collected our chins, knees, breasts, and sure-footed determination. A few thousand years before, Moses parted the Red Sea, and the god with three heads was born in the Middle East. The Choctaw people danced our homeland infrared. Finally, when the stranger's arms reached to strangle the West, grandmother eavesdropped on the three-faced deity who said that chaos was coming. When he puckered his lips and tried to kiss her, she made it rain on him. Maybe you've forgotten you were born of water and women, she said, walking away, laughing. Okay, so the first thing I tend to do with poetry is I go through and I gloss. And what glossing means is on this side, you do a quick summary. Here's what this stanza, don't forget collections of lines in poetry called stanza, not paragraph. So again, on the left side, I would make notes of what each stanza means. So, uh, sorry. So I'd make a note, okay, this is the beginning of life for red people. It the stanza shows readers how life began. Right? Okay. So here we'll do it. Let's do it for each one. Second stanza further illuminates on creation and birth and life. Third, third stanza shows humans forming and how they came to be how they are. Standard shows um, that the Choctaw people lived longer than the three headed religion and that the people that we found. Right? Okay. Introduces to 
Sorry, everybody. Based duty. Shows the conflict betwixt. Betwixt is one of my favorite words, just so everyone knows. The G. Grandma gives the three face deity shade. In other words, she flexes her authority. Right. So the left side is really all about just what each stanza is about. Then on the right side, if I were handwriting this, I would write um, and identify the themes, the motifs, any of the literary devices, symbols, archetypes, all of that. Um, so in an effort to kind of make it simpler for you guys to follow, what I'm just going to do is go through and highlight um, things that are of interest to me or that I think are important. So... Salt uh, is important, salt of the earth, these kind of things. And then we also have water. That's pretty important. It's symbolic. It's one of the elements. Water is renewal, rebirth. Um, and then we have heartbeat here. Heart representing life, love, blood, right? Um, I would probably the evidence of red here we've got that red that blood color again we've got heartbeat again so suddenly I'm starting to see oh heart blood red motif right uh, corn woman is something that I would want to look up if I didn't know what that is I I do happen to know who corn woman is but Again, we have red man and woman. Uh, red men, red women, evidence of red, right? We've got timeline, which establishes the, the depth of Moses immediately. We should be going to, to Judaism and Christianity, the three-headed the God with three heads. So this is something that I would identify as um, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, also Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? So we're really getting into the non-red people. And here we have again red. Right, so that red, it's a motif, that's really important here. Um, this is colonialism, right? Conquerors, strife, threats. And yet, grandmother, she's just laughing, right? She made it rain on him, so again, we've got water. So here, once I'd finish, I'd be thinking about, okay, what is the theme? What are the motifs? We've got water, we've got red, and red manifesting in different ways. And so, ultimately, we come to the conclusion, oh, this is a creation story, but also a battle story, right? It's the creation of the Choctaw people. Here's how they came to be. Here's who they were. Then the conflict, the threat of the three, three-headed deity, which lets us know it's about the Europeans and colonialism, but that the, the red people, the evidence of red is still there, still strong. They did not just roll over. In fact, they laughed in the face, right? And they continue to laugh. They continue to exist. 
So that's kind of the way that I would start breaking it down. And then once I did all of that, motifs, themes, symbols, all that you just watched me do, I'd sit down and be like, okay, so what does this ultimately mean? I'm gonna leave that for you uh, because this is gonna be part of the discussion board, but you've kind of got to start here, all right? So you've kind of watched me do this. Uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, if not, we will figure out what to do next. All right, talk to you soon.